I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us tonight. Really happy tonight to introduce Christy Hensel. Thank Christy, you. thanks for coming over and Thank you sharing your story me. with us. You're welcome. She has an interesting story in that um, you didn't start out as a Mormon. No, I didn't. I was born and raised here. and here in Salt Lake. Uh-huh, uh -huh. yep. And um, just uh, always wanted to be a Mormon, but my parents were against it, and so I... But you attended me. I, I mean, did. You went to primary I started at a very and... young, young, young age. My, my grandmother's neighbor would take me to Sunday school. Wow. And um, then I would go to primary, and then I went to young women's and mutual. Yeah. And, um, Did you go to camps and that kind of I stuff? I didn't ever get to go to camps oh, because okay. this wasn't something that my parents were crazy about uh, doing they and let supporting. You go, but they, they let yes, yeah. they let me. And so I used to just lay in bed and dream about the day I could, you know, have my own family, and we'd all go to church and all belong to the church. So wow, interesting. <laughs> And that that's uh, and you grew up that way through into teenage years. I and did, I did. I I um, had a little bump in the road, and I married my high school sweetheart. And he wasn't active. His parents had actually come over here from Holland, oh. and he was a to member, join the church. Active, uh huh. Right? But his parents were divorced. Uh, it was a bad situation, so he. He didn't want anything to do with the church, but of course I thought I could convince him eventually. And get him converted yes, or yes. made him more active. So yeah. Could, and, and you still weren't a member at this point. I still wasn't a member, but uh, in our neighborhood they must have been hard up for primary teachers or something because I taught <laughs> primary and I taught Sunday school and Even as a non-member. Uh, non yeah. And, um, kept trying to talk my husband into it to the point where it actually became a real problem in our marriage and we eventually got a divorce. Because you wanted to become mm -hmm. a member and he mm -hmm. didn't mm -hmm. didn't want you to. Yeah. So you divorced and then? Yes. And yeah, and then I worked. I had to work. I was supporting my two little boys and I oh. was a real estate agent. And mm -hmm. One day I met this all-American Mormon boy that walked through the door and <laughs> He was from uh, Rick's College, and he he uh, asked me out, yeah. and I was so excited. I thought, oh, this is going to be it. This is going to be, <laughs> you know, I'm finally going to be like everyone else. Yeah, return missionary, yeah. I understand. And, yeah. So he sent the missionaries over, oh, Okay. and I had the lessons, and um, of course, you know, at the end, they asked me to pray about it. Sure. And... I did, and I didn't have any burning of the bosom or anything, but I mean, You'd you, you, to want, it, you want it to be true, yeah. you know, so you, you're going to say, yeah, I, I know it's true, wow. you, you know. Um, so I got baptized. And, and did, uh, did you feel like you had a testimony of the church I, and Joseph know, Smith and the Book of Mormon? Yeah, or? I really did. Yeah. You know, I really felt like, but it was the only thing I knew. I'd never really gone to any other 
churches. Okay, you so, know. Yeah. And it just sounded so right and so perfect okay. that I thought, yeah, this and is... And with the idea of probably thing. getting married in the temple mm -hmm. in a year or so. In a year, uh-huh. Yeah. We planned that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did you read the Book of Mormon? Oh, get through most of it. A little bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, you know, I don't. I'm not a big reader, and with two little kids, yeah. I didn't really spend a lot Busy of time. Enough. You know, and I really didn't think it was important to really study it because I thought just, you just going knew it to was church. True. Yeah, yeah, going to church and knowing all of the the things I was supposed to do yeah. seemed, you know, more of an emphasis on that. Yeah. You know, I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't. Use foul language, you know. Oh, you were a pretty good girl. And then, I huh? thought, yeah, <laughs> hey, you know, I've got it down. <laughs> I wonder how many Latter day Saints haven't read the Book of Mormon. You know, it's probably you know, a lot. I know. Our guest last week, we were talking about the number of inactive people that are in each ward. And just from my experience, it can range anywhere from a third to a half of the people don't go to church. I assume they don't read the Book of Mormon or spend any time in gospel topics and so on. And yet they probably would defend the church to the... Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, you bet. Yeah. You bet. Okay. Yeah. So you do get converted. I and do. About, so you must have been a thrilling thing for the missionaries to, to get <laughs> baptized in a ward, a ward setting. I'm sure they uh, were excited to have you baptized. Did, yeah. Did you get to speak yeah. in meetings and stuff um, about your... Wow. Conversion? You remember that? I can't Maybe remember not. doing that. No, okay. I really can't. Well, sometimes they do you. that just to yeah. encourage others that are Oh, I see. Yeah. Know, studying yeah. and looking. Well, we'd been going for so long. I think people just it's assumed just a, we were. A formality yeah. at this point. Yeah. 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 So then uh, things don't go quite as planned during that first year of marriage. No. And, yeah. No, that was not a good yeah. a good thing. It was not anything was not anything like <laughs> I thought it would be and mm. and neither was he yeah um, which was very discouraging and um, of course having my parents not not have not wanting me to be in the LDS church that was a great opportunity for my mother to bring over a bunch of books <laughs> on oh. Joseph Smith and I was um, gonna ask you what kind of mm -hmm. led you to start looking and at things and she says now maybe you'll read these because um, you know, I'd been so hurt by this person that I married. Yeah. So um, I started reading about him and what his kinds of things? Why, well, the polygamy, mostly his yeah. wives and um, and the his, church has just come out with some new materials. Yeah, uh, yeah. Last few I don't. You know, she had. I wish I could remember all the things she had, but um, just the way that I that I started to to see his character. Joseph Smith's character. Uh -huh. yeah. I thought, I really, I don't, I don't know that much about God, but I don't feel like this would be someone he would choose to start a new church. <laughs> you know, yeah. I just, I started to have a lot of doubts about that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, was it a lot of about polygamy then, or were there about, other doctrinal yeah, things? Yeah, and, and about the false um, prophecies he's, he'd had, and some of the the dealings he'd had with the the um, well, what do you call it? The black magic kind of thing, yeah, you the know? Occult stuff yeah, and, yeah, yeah. That was and masonry. That yeah, kind of that, always all, got all of that me. kind of thing just really bothered me. Yeah. really bothered me, and I just didn't have a good feeling about it. And I thought, and after what I went through with the marriage, I thought, well, I know there is a God, I, but I I don't believe it's in Mormonism. And I don't really know where he is or what he is. And how long ago after, or how long after your baptism was this thought uh, process? It was, was it about, soon after? No, it was about uh, three, four years after. Uh -huh. um, I still went. I still wanted my kids to go. Yeah. Um, because I didn't. I couldn't offer them anything else. Were you mad at your mom for sharing this stuff, um, or was it? Mm, yes and no. Yeah. I didn't really let her know how much it affected me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. You didn't want to be um, honest that, oh, yeah, so maybe I made, yeah. did make a mistake here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, but I did, you know, start taking it to heart. Yeah. And I would say I still kept going. And then there was a period of time where I just started questioning everything. 
and um, like if the true church isn't true, mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. is anything true? Is anything kind of, true? Yeah. yeah, and what? And that's a very common thing, isn't you it? You really to, do. Yeah. You know, you think here, here you're so drawn into something. It's like, am I just being a fool? Am I just searching for something? You know, that's not there. What do I really know? Uh -huh. and what worse? What don't I know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so it it was about probably oh, 10 years where I was quite active and then I didn't you know stop going but I really I went just to be a part of it just yeah. to be you know More just to be social, yes for the social part the group, and yeah. and how they they love family and it's a good way to raise your children and I you know yeah so that's you know pretty much why what I happens go. <laughs> well, <laughs> then I moved to California, and uh, we just had a whole, a completely different atmosphere there. I had a really good friend who had moved to California, to San Diego, and I became very busy in kind of a career and, and dating and, and raising my kids and things, and so she had gotten into the new age. Oh. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and the and positive at, thinking and And at this point, you're of kind of wandering here and there, mm -hmm, maybe, and not mm -hmm. sure where your roots are or exactly. your anchor is. And exactly. Okay. So there was, yeah, so there was, there was that journey. Yeah. And um, I ended up marrying a fellow. We moved back to Utah and um, went through some really trying times with my, my mother was an alcoholic. Oh. And she was she was giving me a difficult time. My husband was an alcoholic. Oh dear. My teenager was giving me a hard time. Life really hit. <laughs> Life really yeah. hit. Yeah. And at that time, I thought, you know, I really think God probably just hates me. That He doesn't like yeah. you at all. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's a God, then He just wants nothing to do with me. Because you've disappointed mm -hmm. Him. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. I yeah. haven't. You know, I'm not. I'm not that good person, you know. I've I haven't followed the rules perfectly, and so, so I'm <sighs> I'm just going to hope for the best when I die. <laughs> you know, yeah. I didn't know what else to believe. Yeah, I think again we've mentioned this before, but living trying to live by the law makes mm -hmm. that so you know where we don't feel adequate and we, we feel guilty. And you do. We I judge had so ourselves. much guilt because I mean basically from the time I was four or five years old going to the Mormon church that was ingrained in me yeah. you know the no smoking the no drinking and right. you know just following the rules and right. and and that's all I knew yeah. even when I didn't want to go anymore that's still all I knew okay so what happens after new age times <laughs> well it's so funny because when we moved back I picked an insurance agent out of the yellow pages yeah. just randomly yeah. and he was the sweetest guy and we had him for like three years and then my mother she fell asleep well she passed out probably drinking she started her house on fire oh dear a neighbor pulled her out it's christmas eve my kids are watching tv and they go nana's on the tv and oh, i'm like no. oh no she'd burned her house down she was being belligerent they're trying to get her into the ambulance and I thought, oh my gosh, what more? I had an angry husband. I, had, I felt like the whole world was coming down. Mm -hmm. So I called my insurance agent because I didn't know what kind of insurance she had, what to do. And generally he talked to me on the phone, but this time he said, you know, why don't you come by my office? And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh geez, okay, you know, I'll drive all the way down there. And that day I was just in a terrible mood. I didn't know what to do with my mom. I knew I probably had to put her somewhere because she didn't, you know, yeah. she was a, you know, she would have harmed herself or something. So I walk in his office and he has his Bible out. Oh my. And, and he, and I walk in and he goes, he goes, oh hi, you know, he says, you know, I was just reading here in Revelation where it says, where Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone will hear me and open the door, I will come in and wow. I will sit with them. And you know, 
I hadn't read the Bible. You know, I, I mean, maybe I kind of glanced through it, but I did not understand it at all. Yeah. And that just from the moment he said that to me, I was like just right there. And and he says, how are you? You know, and I said, oh, I'm okay. And he says, you know, um, let me read a few other verses to you. And he oh, and he's he's uh, reading out. An I know. Age, yeah. And I and I wasn't even thinking it was weird. You yeah. know, that was what was so strange <laughs> about it. And he says, you've been through a lot. Um, haven't you? And I go, yeah, I, I'm really kind of frazzled. And he said, would you mind if I prayed for you? And I said, no, that's what, you know, and so, and, and I remember when he prayed, he said, God, let her be open. Let her have ears to hear. Let her, you know, I pray that you will draw her to you. Yeah. And I remember him saying that. And, um, then he went on, and he read Romans, you know, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And, and um, he said, do you believe in God? And I said, yes, I do. And he says, do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? And I said, I do. And then he said, you know, Christ died for all of your sins. And it's a free gift. You know, and he started talking to me, and I was just so, he says, would you like Jesus to be Lord of your life? My goodness. And I'm, and I'm just <laughs> sitting here in my, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, he must not know me very well, <laughs> because he wouldn't ask me that. Because I know God doesn't <laughs> like me. <laughs> exactly. And I just said, I do. I do. And I'm, I'm thinking, where does this come from, you know? But, and then we prayed, and, and I just remember oh, it changed my whole life. I, I left there feeling like, I went in there feeling like it was the end of the world, and I left there <laughs> feeling like it was the beginning of a new life. Sounds like being born again, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Born of the Spirit. Yeah. Oh, how yeah. exciting. So, and I was the first one in my family to ever, you know, have that experience and yeah. to go through that. And so then I just, as soon as I left, I thought, I can't believe that all of my sins are forgiven. You'd never think. had that concept mm -hmm. before. Never, what? for first time. Yeah, you'd never heard that message never. in Mormonism. Never. I never did either. Mm -hmm. I knew he paid for my sins, but I figured I had to do all the work, mm -hmm. that I had to earn my way and, and uh, repent of my mm -hmm. sins, which mm -hmm. isn't an unchristian thing. I mean, we do that as Christians, but right. we, we have forgiven or uh, regret for our things we do wrong, but to know that all of our sins are paid for is oh, gives you it, such freedom, it, yeah. doesn't it? It was. And it that's was. what Jesus said, he that believeth in me hath everlasting life. Mm -hmm. So then what happens? Did you talk to your boys or your yeah, husband? Yeah, I just, I just thought, I want, I want my whole family to know this, yeah. you know. To, what did they think? They thought I was crazy. Oh, I dear. Think. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just went home and I go, I'm born again. I prayed to have Jesus be Lord of my <laughs> life. And they're all like, okay, well, <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to the next subject. <laughs> You Somet know, sometimes we approach that differently uh, yeah. if we. So. Yeah, but but Jerry, the the fellow who who I prayed with, and this was um, I was forty six years old before wow. I heard the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So um, he was so good to disciple me. You know, if I had any questions, and yeah. he'd tell me what to read in the Bible, and you'd have you'd have questions mm -hmm. and get them answered. And he said, you know, you just need to start praying for the rest of your family. You yeah. know. So did you start reading the Bible then? I did. Or? I did. And had you ever done that before? No. No. No, I In hadn't. fact, did you even have any respect for the Bible before as a Mormon? Um, you know, I... Was that I, anything that ever was, crossed your path, so to speak? Yeah, not really. I mean, the missionaries not didn't really. have you read the Bible. No. They had no. you read the Book of Mormon. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so, I, yeah. I noticed there, there wasn't 
anything in from the Book of Mormon that I recognized in the Bible much, you know. <laughs> so, wow. like the, you know, all of the names of all the different <laughs> tribes and stuff were in the Bible. So. And so, the Bible then, studying that, has that been a, a joy for oh, you? Oh, yeah, God's Word is amazing. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and Jesus, I guess, is... Yeah, he, you know, he... Is he, he a different Jesus than in, in Mormonism? Oh, yes. What, uh, yes. can you articulate that a little bit? You know, I don't remember a lot about Jesus at the different times I would go, you know, to different things. It was a lot about the social life, primary, you know, Jesus wants me for a sunbeam. But he was our brother. Yeah, our you know, he wasn't God. No. You know, he didn't say. Well, he us. had to progress, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, he still had work to do, and he had to come to the earth. And right. Yeah. Right, and he came so that we could get a body. Right. You know. And set an example for right. baptism and stuff. Yeah. So, so. So who's Jesus now to you? Oh, he's everything. Yeah. He is everything. He's God. And he is God. He's my, yeah. He's my savior. I mean, he's, he is my ever-present, you know, yeah. uh, peace in times of trouble. He's just everything. I know it's such a subtle difference, but everyone we've talked to, I mean, every former Mormon has said the same thing about <laughs> Jesus, yeah. that it isn't the same Jesus. And no. I know we use the same words in Mormonism, and they certainly believe in the historical Jesus, but we don't believe that his father, God, uh, was ever once a man, right, oh, as Christians. No. We don't believe we can become a God. No, no. Um, and I've often asked the question, uh, how did Jesus become a God if he, and then John 1.1 1, 1 says he was with God and was God, and then became flesh. Yeah. Well, interesting. So then what happens in life? You just been, have you, did you start going to a Christian church? Yes, or what? Uh -huh. I started going How to How was that the first church. time? You know, it, it was beautiful. Was it? It really was. It really was. I really, um, I just really felt the spirit there. I felt, yeah. you know, going to the LDS church, it was always kind of chaotic. I mean, people were giving their kids Cheerios and <laughs> toys and books and there was so much going on and and the people standing up there talking were you know like your neighbor telling some story you know yeah. <laughs> with a few scriptures yeah here and there. Yeah. yeah and you know this this had a real you know a real message you know he was actually reading out of the Bible and it was it was really and the music did you notice how that was praising yes and I didn't so know different. that we could clap you know, at clapping end. at the yeah. end, you know, yeah. or any of that, you know. Well, it's so different to, to praise Jesus in that way. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it, it's so refreshing. I mean, yeah, it's just so course, different yeah. to, to feel like you're really worshiping and yeah. every song that you sing mm -hmm. is praising God, praising, yeah, it's just praising beautiful. Jesus. It really is. And then to go through the Bible verse by verse, as many of them do, most of them do. Mm -hmm. and That was so different for me because in Mormonism, it always seemed like it was some kind of a topic either paying your tithing or temple work or home teaching or something. Mm -hmm. And then they'd pull in a few selected scriptures out of the Bible and all right. the other standard works to support the talk. Yeah. Yeah. But it really wasn't learning what the Bible yeah. had to say. And, and I truly believe that until we're filled with the Spirit that we really don't see it. You know, I, like before, there's a blindness, yeah, isn't there? I really think there is. That's all I can attribute it mm -hmm. to. Now, you mentioned earlier that you said you didn't think God liked liked you. <laughs> no, I really didn't. Not well, as a God Mormon. didn't I, really care. I didn't really. What do you think? What do you think now? Yeah. Well, you know, I am amazed that that He chose me. I'm amazed that He loved me that much. You know, yeah. it's just it's such a gratefulness. You know, it really is. I'm and, just so grateful. And it's like an amazing grace, isn't it? It is. That it you is. know you're a sinner. And to know, I mean, and you are. You're, you know, a wretch like me. Yeah. Where when I was a Mormon, I felt I was a good person. Yeah. You it know? was all about you, <laughs> it wasn't it? It was all about me. Yeah. You earning your me. own way. Yeah. And, 
and what yeah. you'd done lately and, yeah. and what you'd accomplished. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then as and a now, Christian, yeah. it's no, you can be your authentic self, which is really not very good, you and, know. And admit and, that you're a wretch. Or a, uh, yeah, a you saved a wretch like me. That had so much meaning. Yeah. Um, because you know, like the the verse where the woman um, washes Jesus' feet, you know, and yeah. those who have been forgiven much love much. Yeah. You know, that is so true. And, and, to, and to know that, I mean, even in Mormonism, we called him an advocate, but it was, we were saved by grace after all we could do. Jesus kind of comes in at the end after we've proven ourselves as much as we can and his grace kind of finishes it off. But now as a Christian, I have this picture of Jesus standing there with, I guess even his arm around me, just mm -hmm. saying to God, He's okay. Yeah. He believes me. Yeah. He trusts me and he's turned his life to me. And the sins that I paid for, I paid for his sins. So you can, you know, accept him. Right. That's, that's right. different than yeah. Mormonism, climbing I, the ladder of, yeah. of works. Yeah. And I, you know, I was so, so wrapped up in, in the works that almost to the point where if somebody didn't know something wrong I did, then it wasn't a sin. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Seriously. You, you might have thought it's God like knew, but you really... It's only a sin if, if somebody, somebody finds, knows, yeah. you know, and tells the bishop or something, Isn't you know? Isn't funny? You know? And we compartmentalize, we rationalize. Right, because it was about me, for me, yeah. so I, I wanted everything to be perfect. Oh. Where now it's like I can't hide from God. No. He knows every wretched thing about me, <laughs> you know, and He still loves me. And, and He still loves you. So and did amazing. what He did for us. Yeah. Well, we've only got a few seconds left, believe it or not. Uh, mm -hmm. What would you say to your family, to the LDS people? You know, I would just say that I, I can imagine how difficult it is, because I've been there, and and especially for those who have been born into it, and and that's all they know. Yeah. And they're hearing things, and they're questioning, and and I understand that. I really, really it do. It takes time. But you know, what is truly important? Eternity is a long, long time. So take the time. Yeah, and take study the time. It out. And you know, the Bible wants right. you to search every word. Yeah. You know, so don't be afraid. Okay. Don't be afraid to search. Christy, thanks so much. You're we so sure welcome. appreciate Thank your you. sweet story. I and you I'm sure much. you've touched some lives out there. I hope people will pay attention I and hope listen. So too. <laughs> Do remember you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Good night. See you next week. <laughs>